that there's good in the world and there's evil in the world. And what he is telling us is that we have to renew our minds in order to conform to his system and not the system of evil that persists. And sometimes that's a challenge because we face these competing forces and every day of our lives we're trying to decide which direction to go in. To renew means to make new again over and over. Free means to do again. So basically what he is saying to us is that every day of your life you have to remind yourself of who you are, who you are connected to, and how to make choices to conform to his will. One of the interesting things about life is that you know, when we think about something like prayer, sometimes we, we, we may feel that, um, why should I pray every day? If I, tell, if I say to God what I want or what I desire, he knows it and that's the end of the story. But the truth of the matter is, it's not for him, it's for us. Because we live in what you would call a hostile environment or, or an environment of competing forces. So we have to constantly renew our minds every day so that we can conform to his desires for us. As we traverse life, one of the most important principles to remember is the value and critical nature of the mind. Words or thoughts become words. Words become action. Actions become behavior. Behavior becomes lifestyle. And lifestyle becomes a culture. So it all begins in the mind. So it's so important for us to make sure that we renew our minds. We remind ourselves every day of who we are, what our assignment is, what our value is, what is good, what is evil. And we make the appropriate choices. One of the things that I made a determination to do many years ago because Everyone in this world faces the same challenge. We face the same choices. Every day we have an opportunity to do good or evil. But if you consistently, every day, take time to remind yourself of God's way, His purpose, and you renew your mind to that, then it translates into your behavior. It translates into your action. So I want to encourage you today to remember to renew your mind. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. <laughs> Father God, we just thank you for another opportunity to gather in this place to conduct the business on behalf of the people of the Bahamas. Father, we thank you as always that each of us, no matter what side we represent, we are here for the people of the Bahamas. And we pray that we would all in this place to our jobs according to the assignment that you gave us. Lord, we thank you as always for civility, for friendly discussion, dialogue, and we thank you in advance that your will will be done even as we follow your determinations and your plan. And we thank you for these things, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Let us give us our bread. And we give those who bless our sins. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And thine is the kingdom, power and glory, forever and ever. Amen.
morning, honorable members. Honorable members, um, in this COVID-19 environment, it is very important that we maintain the protocols that were established in this chamber. And so members, I am asking all members to honor the seating arrangements that were established earlier, where on each bench, we have a maximum of four persons on each bench. Uh, to, to keep the opposition caucus together, our honorable member for Centerville, I would ask that you take a seat on the, on the second bench and the honorable members of the official opposition, if you can spread out to take the entire front bench so that we can have the proper the proper physical distancing, honorable member for Cat Island, can you go all the way? Or, or, or have, uh, if you want to sit in the center, you can have another member take the other end. Honorable members, um, honorable member for Mango Peak, four, only four on each bench. Thank you, thank you so much, honorable members. Honorable members, when the business of this house suspended, uh, we were at statements and communications by ministers on the order of business. But just before we proceed, honorable members, I wish to table um, a number of documents, a report from the Auditor General. The first report is an auditor, the Auditor General's office audit examination of the accounts of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Bahamas Embassy, Brussels, and Belgium for the period February 2nd, 2019 to October 10th, 2019. Order that the document to lie on the table. <laughs> Second um, report from the Office of the Auditor General is the audit examination of the accounts of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Bahamas Permanent Mission, Geneva, for the period 1st of June 2017 to the 30th of September 2019. Order that the document do lie on the table. And the third and final report from the Office of the Auditor General is an audit report of the Consulate General of the Bahamas, Miami, for the period the 1st of July 2016 to the 30th of June 2018. Order that the document to lie on the table. Continuing with the order of business, further statements and communications by ministers. The Chair recognizes the Honorable Member for Bamboo Town. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we, given where we are, we'd like to just go back uh, one step, Mr. Speaker, in the order of business to laying of documents by ministers. Uh, I would have spoken to the leader of opposition of business, and I understand that the side officers would have no uh, objection to us just going back to the laying of documents by ministers. So I'd like to move that the House just goes back to the laying of documents by the state. Um, 
the uh, official opposition? Can you indicate? Thank you, thank you, Honorable Member. So we move back on the order of business to laying of documents by ministers. The Chair recognizes the Honorable Member for Kalani. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House of Congress for the emergency powers COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah, the emergency powers COVID-19 pandemic number number eight. Order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do, do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. No, I, I'm going to lay that. I'm going to do that after. And the Chair recognizes the Honorable Member for East Grand Bahama. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House the Bahamas Registered Stock Directions 2020, Bahamas Registered Stock Number 9, 2023, 2025, 2027, 2030, 2040, and 2050. Order that the documents be brought up. that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Chair recognizes honorable member for East Grand Bahama. Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House of Bahamas Registered Stock Direction 2020, Bahamas Registered Stock Number 10, 2023, 2025, 2027, 2030, 2040, and 2050. Order that the documents be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Chair recognizes the Honorable Member for East Grand Bahama. Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House the Bahamas Register Stock Direction 2020, Bahamas Register Stock Number 4, 2021. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Chair recognizes the Honorable Member for Bamboo Town. I beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the following, the Price Control General Amendment Number 2, Regulations 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Uh, Mr. Just Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the following, the Register of Beneficial Ownership Amendment Act 2020, Appointed Day Notice 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Mr. Speaker, there are no further laying of documents by ministers. Thank you, Honorable Member. Uh, honorable members, at this time, I take the opportunity to lay on the on the table uh, messages from the Senate. Uh, the first message is number 44 from the Honorable Senate. The message to the Honorable Speaker and members of the Honorable House of Assembly from the Honorable President and Honorable Members of the Senate. The Honorable Senate acquaints the Honorable House of Assembly that they have passed the following bill and desire the consent of the honorable, this honorable chamber, namely a bill for an act to amend the investment fund act. Also from the Senate, message number 45, the Senate acquaints the House of Assembly that they have passed the following bill, Accompanying message number 43, dated the 18th of December 2019 from the Honorable House of Assembly. A bill for an act to provide for the establishment of tax, a tax appeal commission and for matters connected therewith. 
Message number 46, the Honorable Senate acquaints the House of Assembly that they have passed the following bills, accompanying message number 46 dated the 24th of February 2020 from the Honorable House of Assembly. A, a bill for an act for the appropriation of further diverse sums of money fawn towards defraying the expenses of the government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas on the revenue account during the fiscal year, commencing the 1st of July 2019 and ending the 30th of June 2020, and also a bill for an act for the appropriation of further sums of money for and towards defraying the expenses of the government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas for the capital development during the fiscal year commencing the 1st of July 2019 and ending the 30th of June 2020. Now, these are a lot of communications from the Senate. Uh, message number 46. Message from the Senate number 46. Resolve that this House, A, approves the continuing of the proclamation until the 8th of April 2020. We have already passed that period. Message number 50, resolve that this House approves the continuance of the proclamation made on the 17th day of March 2020 until the 30th day of May 2020. Message number 51, resolve that this House approves uh, the continuance of the proclamation made on the 17th day of March 2020 until the 29th day of June 2020. Message number 52. The Honorable Senate acquaints the House that they have passed the following bills. A bill for an act for the appropriation of diverse sums of money to, to, towards defraying the expenses of the Commonwealth of Bahamas for the period commencing July 20. 20 and ending June 30th, 2021. A bill for an act to amend the Tariff Act. A bill for an act to amend the Excise Act. A bill for an act to amend the Value Added Tax Act. A bill for an act to amend the Customs Management Act. A bill for an act to amend the Stamp Act. And a bill for an act for the appropriation of sums of five hundred and fifteen million five hundred and twenty four thousand five hundred and seventy nine dollars for and towards defraying the expenses of the government of the commonwealth of the bahamas for the period uh ending the 30th of june 2021 just two more and we finish uh, message number 53 from the Senate. The Senate acquaints the House that the Senate has passed a bill for an act to repeal the Central Bank of the Bahamas Act, Chapter 351. A bill for an act to repeal the Banks and Trusts um, Companies Regulation Act. And a bill for an act to amend the present, the Protection of Depositors Act. And the final message from the Senate. The Honorable Senator acquaints the House of Assembly that they have passed the following the following resolution. And I'll just read the first paragraph. Now therefore be it resolved that the house, this House approves the continuance of the proclamation made on the 29th day of June 2020 until the 30th day of September, 2020. Order that the messages from the Senate to lie on the table. Further statements and communications by ministers. The chair recognizes the honorable member for Kalani. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, um, at the end of my communication, I would lay the 
final report of the economic um, review committee. Um, but I have one request also, Mr. Speaker. Um, it would appear that the Senate has always received such report at very late um, stage. Um, if it's possible, as we receive, as we here in Parliament receive a copy of the report, if a copy of the report can be sent to each respective senator at the same time. Thank you, Honorable Member. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to congratulate the Honorable Member, Minister Darren Hanfield, who has been um, elected on the recommendation of both Canada and Mexico to the 50th, uh, to become the president of the 50th regular session of General Assembly of the Organization of American States. And um, I think that is a great achievement. So on behalf of um, the government of Bahamas, I would like to personally thank both Canada and Mexico for such recommendation. And I'm certain that Dr. Hen at Minister Henfield would do an awesome job. The speaker is my privilege to table in the House of Assembly the summary report of the Economic Recovery Committee. The committee's remit was to make specific policy recommendations for the short and medium term, which could help with our ongoing economic recovery as we face the worst economic downturn since the Great Depression 100 years ago. The committee was asked to be bold and specific and to suggest recommendations that would help in the current economic crisis that we presently face today. We are in a particular moment in history. We must meet the challenges of the moment now this is a matter of economic survival and of preparing for a better future. Our immediate objective is to stimulate the economy as much as possible. Just as my government is committed to beating COVID-19 and reclaiming our country's future, we will do everything in our power to restore jobs, livelihoods, and our economy. Mr. Speaker, I want to, at this time, thank the co-chairs and members of the committee for their dedicated and hard work in producing this report during one of the most difficult times in the history of the Bahamas. And I am sure that the House, as they have just done, will join me in thanking them for their services. The committee, Mr. Speaker, represented a cross-section of talent and viewpoints from the public and private sectors. The co-chairs of the committee are the Acting Financial Secretary Marlon Johnson and Kenneth Kerr, the CEO of Providence Advisors. I also thank those who served on the various subcommittees as well as the general public and the many stakeholders who offered their enthusiasm, ideas, and specific recommendations. In addition to virtual town meetings, there were many written submissions from citizens, union officials, general contributors, business people, experts in various policy areas, and leaders of nonprofit organizations. The committee harnessed a number of ideas from the collective wisdom of the Bahamian people. On behalf of the nation, I heartily thank all of those seeking to offer light and hope during these very difficult times. As Bahamians, Mr. Speaker, as people of faith, we must always look to the rising sun in order to navigate the open, wide, and treacherous shores. It is often easy to say what is wrong. It is much more difficult 
to offer concrete suggestions and advice to address shared challenges. Mr. Speaker, the Cabinet had an initial briefing on the report. This past Sunday, we held another special Cabinet meeting to discuss various aspects of the report. We will hold further meetings to discuss and to deliberate on the various recommendations. In short order, I will note the unit or group that will be responsible for the oversight of the execution of the recommendations in the report that are accepted. It is vital, Mr. Speaker, that there is a designated entity to oversee the implementation process. And further, the Cabinet Secretary will arrange for a briefing on the report for all permanent secretaries. Today I will inform the House of some of the policy recommendations, policy directions we will pursue. Let me emphasize that we will not accept all the recommendations of the report. In November, I will provide another update to the country on our deliberations on the report. In the interim, I invite the general public to consider what has been recommended. The summary report will be available at opm.gov.bs. I repeat, the summary report will be available at opm.gov.bs. Mr. Speaker, the committee has proposed a broad range of reforms and recommendations. They are intended to seed new industries and economic opportunities or to expand existing ones, to make the Bahamas more attractive for domestic and international investment, and to make certain bureaucratic systems more efficient and less burdensome for citizens and businesses. Again, not all of the recommendations will be pursued. By example, the government has rejected the recommendation to remove the $500 customs duty exemption. However, there are many other policy changes and initiatives contained in the report that can be implemented and that will help to make our recovery and our country more resilient, more dynamic, more inclusive, and most of all, more attainable. I want as many Bahamians as possible to see this document because we must all be a part of the reform process. The government, labor, civil society, businesses and citizens all have roles to play, Mr. Speaker. I ask the Bahamian people to make their views known to cabinet ministers and their elected representatives. Mr. Speaker, allow me to generally describe some of the economic realities facing our Bahamas as a result of the widespread global economic collapse resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic that we face today. Early in the pandemic, my government quickly recognized the devastating effects of the pandemic on our economy in general and on the tourism and hospitality sector in particular. And because tourism has mostly ground to a halt our economy is in the worst state ever in our modern history. Indeed, much worse than the Great Recession of 2008. My government's policies 
had just returned the country to sustainability, sustainable, consistent growth when the pandemic began. We had reduced our yearly deficit and we had improved public finances. And before the pandemic, we were experiencing record numbers of tourists on our shores. But sadly, we must prepare ourselves for the reality that these numbers will not return for some time. We had a record year in tourism in 2019, welcoming more than 7 million visitors in spite of the tremendous damage caused by Hurricane Dorian in the northern Bahamas. The pandemic, Mr. Speaker, changed everything. Tourism is the engine of our entire economy. During the global first wave in the spring, international travel all but ceased. Our world-class hotels and cruise ports closed. Seven months later, the pandemic rages on. Global health experts previously predicted a bad winter in the Northern Hemisphere. People are more indoors during colder months. The virus spreads easier in closed environments and poor ventilation. And already in North America and Europe, COVID-19 cases are spiking. And sadly, the predictions of the health experts are proving correct. Our tourism industry, Mr. Speaker, will come back. Of that, I am certain. We will recover to pre-COVID levels. However, we must have realistic expectations as to when this will happen and when tourists from our major markets will begin traveling again by air and cruise ships. It will take time for us to return to vibrancy, Mr. Speaker. It will take time to get our arrival numbers back to where they were. It will take time to get our hotels open and filled with guests. Most of this return will heavily depend on how we as a people follow public health guidelines in order to reduce the prevalence of COVID-19 in our country, especially on New Providence. The pandemic, Mr. Speaker, is not close to ending. We will still be in it well into next year. The Amen should not think of this pandemic as a short-term diversion in our lives that when over will quickly lead to the resumption of how we once lived. A different world will emerge on the other side of this crisis. Even international businesses that were stable may be on, may be no more. Ways of doing things that were the norm before COVID-19 will give the, the new modes in a new world. In the words of the ministry, Minister of Trade and Industry in Singapore, I quote, the world has changed irrevocably, end quote. He said this past August that there will not be a recovery and a return to the familiarity 
of the old normal. He warned of the painful truth that we are not returning to a pre-COVID-19 world, that recovery would take time and not likely to be smooth. He also warned we can expect recovering, recurring waves of infection and disruption. Given that the trade and industry minister said, with all the tremendous resources and expertise of a country like Singapore, we must all be honest inside and outside of this chamber of the many health, economic and social challenges faced by a smaller, less developed country like our Bahamas. We must be honest about the nature of this disease and that just about every country in the world is experiencing new waves of infection requiring a variety of emergency measures and restrictions. While we can learn lessons from countries like New Zealand, New Zealand, Singapore and others, we must be honest that our economy is not as developed, nor do we have the financial resources of such commonwealth and other nations. Mr. Speaker, in the Bahamas, we have an economy overwhelmingly led by tourism with financial services as a second sector. We are not as diversified as countries like New Zealand and Singapore, though they too have been very hard hit economically. The near shutdown of global travel due to the pandemic has shown most clearly how critical it is for the Bahamas to do the hard work to further diversify our economy within tourism and in other economic sectors. We must attract more investors, both domestically and internationally. The deep recession we face means that as a people, we must embrace different ideas and different industries. We must be willing to innovate within the existing industries to open up to new opportunities and markets, including in tourism. We must also be open to changing bureaucratic policies that guided us in the past. Put simply, Mr. Speaker, we must be open to reform and change. I set up the Economic Recovery Committee because I knew we needed a considered, considered roadmap for reform in the short, medium, and long term. This time is like no other recent memory. This is the worst crisis in modern Bahamian history. Governments across the globe are supporting their population like no other time since the Second World War. To emerge better and stronger in the post-COVID world, we must be willing to adapt to the changed environment. We cannot, Mr. Speaker, just sit back and wait for what used to be. Mr. Speaker, I wish now to advise the House of a number of policy directions for our economy as well as update the House on three economic projects. Mr. Speaker, one of the main reasons I entered public life was to create economic opportunities for Bahamian entrepreneurs. My mission and vision and that of my government is the promotion of 
the Hemen Enterprise and Tyler through opportunities in areas ranging from education and training to Bahamian ownership in every economic sector. Bahamians are a creative people. Many of us have multiple income streams and in fact those here in Parliament as our salary is capped $28,000 per annum are forced to have multiple income streams. If given a chance, the Bahamian entrepreneur is as industrious and creative as any in the world. Access to funding has been a barrier to the dreams of budding business people for a very long time. That is why my government, Mr. Speaker, created the Small Business Development Center, extending millions in funding to those who want to start or expand a business. We will now significantly increase the funding to the center, embracing a key recommendation of the Economic Recovery Committee. My government will provide $250 million to Bahamian businesses over five years. That million dollars, million, Mrs. 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 Speaker, that is $50 million per year over the next five years. And this would clearly demonstrate our sincerity and our belief in the survival of the small business individuals within our Bahamas. And the speaker, I just want to say that this year alone, as a result of the pandemic, we are providing $55 million to small business. A broad, sustained recovery requires Bahamian business people to have the funding required to create jobs. We, not, we need our Bahamian entrepreneurs to have money to create new businesses or to expand existing ones. With ent ent entrepreneurships, Mr. Speaker, comes risk. Not every idea we lend to will work, but some will. And the successes of these Bahamian entrepreneurs will be our shared success. Through those Bahamian successes, we will have new Bahamian businesses poised to be part of the economic su success of our country in the 21st century. I will also ask the Ministry of Finance and other entities to help make Bahamian entrepreneurs even more aware of the many economic concessions available to Bahamians. Speaker, in the past few years, the world's view on marijuana has changed dramatically. Marijuana is one of the varieties of the cannabis plant. Uruguay and Canada are the two countries that have fully legalized marijuana. In numerous other jurisdictions, there has been decriminalization of the possession of small amounts of marijuana, while also legalizing cannabis plants for various medicinal and industrial purposes. In the United States, for example, marijuana is fully legal 
in 11 states. Medical marijuana is legal in more than 30. Hemp is legal at the federal level. The Bahamas National Commission on Marijuana recommended decriminalization of possession of small amounts of marijuana in its report in January of this year. The government will begin next year the expunging of records of those convicted for the possession of small amounts of marijuana. The commission recommended allowing medicinal marijuana use. The Economic Recovery Committee, ERC, has recommended the full legalization of marijuana for medicinal, religious, and recreational purposes, coupled with an appropriate but nimble regulatory regime that oversees the production and manufacturing, sale, consumption, and export of marijuana. There is this consistency in the recommendations of both the Marijuana Commission and the Economic Recovery Commission. Our cannabis laws, Mr. Speaker, are outdated and as our society is changing, they too must change. The global legal cannabis market is already in the billions of dollars with significant projected growth in the years to come. We are reviewing the possible legalization of a hemp industry. We will report back to the nation following greater public consultation. A hemp industry, Mr. Speaker, would include variations of cannabis low in THC. Bahamian owned or majority Bahamian owned companies must and will lead to any new hemp industry in the Bahamas. Hemp is used in multiple products from clothing to building materials, materials and even in tea bags such as some Lipton tea bags. There are potentially many opportunities for creative Bahamian business people to get involved in this new industry. Mr. Speaker, I note, where's Sandoval? It's for Sandoval. And yeah. I note that legislation exists to provide the sovereign wealth funds. In keeping with the recommendation of the Economic Recovery Committee, we will review the legislation to determine what amendments might be required to allow the Bahamian people to take advantage of this and how a national sovereign wealth fund may be constituted. Mr. Speaker, Consistent with the recommendations of the ERC, we will expedite the processing of the Bahamian and foreign direct investment currently before the government. We will restructure of decision making on foreign direct investment applications. So the applications under a $10 million threshold would not be required to be submitted to the National Economic Council. Further, we will expand our national investment policy. Some members of the ERC committee are currently working on specific suggestions in this area, which will be presented to the government next month. We will review and expedite every serious job creation idea that will spur growth and economic activity. Speaker, the government has made capital works projects in train, has many 
my apology, has many capital works projects in train that will help to employ Bahamians. And I wish to note some of them. The demolition work of the building on the grounds of the old post office and Victoria Hotel will begin shortly. All approvals have been completed. And if it were not for the bad weather, that would have commenced. A modern 21st century central bank will be built on the site of the old Victoria Hotel. And Mr. Speaker, it is still our plan that a new court building would be built on the site of the old post office. I am pleased to report that a new government-operated school on Ragged Island is near completion. Various bridges and capital works are being completed on Andrus. Central Andrus. <laughs> <laughs> And as, as, we, as we speak, individuals from the Ministry of Works are traveling, or will be traveling, to Inagua to do geotechnical studies to ensure that there are no caves below cavities, below ground level, so that we can commence Yes. The new school yes. in Agua, as we had promised. Mr. Speaker, COVID-19 has sped up the digitization of our economy with many services having moved online. We must go even further and faster to build a broader digital economy. And toward this end, we will promote the development of a national digital marketplace. The e-commerce platform can provide opportunity for small businesses and bohemian entrepreneurs to buy and sell goods online across the Bahamas and provide opportunities for global sales. The speaker, you know, just by waiting for a second, we are in the 21st century, and a very long time ago, when I was Minister of Health, I spoke about digital revolution, education, yeah, telemedicine, nice. and the whole world. And, and we were well advanced and moving forward. But it disappoints me today that some of our major stores, when world, the whole world is asking about um, curbside pickup. It disappoints me that some of our major stores still do not have online facilities where one can order such materials and equipment online and have delivered to their respective places or pick up. And I would hope that most, if not all, of our stores would move towards online purchases an online payment so that we can truly compete in the global market. Mr. Speaker, we have a wealth of talent among our Bahamian people, especially our artisans. As I would remember, I would recall very well that a Junkanoo doll was given to me as a gift. A doll of Bahamian material and bohemian design and that doll was made in Taiwan. <laughs> Our product made in Taiwan and given to me as a gift. Mr. Speaker, that shows the talent that we have. Why should we be purchasing Junkano products from Taiwan? Taiwan should be purchasing such products 
from the experts and the professionals. As I look forward to that this day. We will further digitize the national investment process for domestic and international investors. We will also bring forward other recommendations to make it easier for citizens, businesses, and investors to access and to utilize government services online. Mr. Speaker, through the Small Business Development Center and the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries, we will give direct financial support to farmers and fishers. There are a number of Bahamian and international investment projects throughout the Bahamas that will result in jobs for Bahamians at this time, including the construction industry. And I wish to update the House on just three investment projects that are still on track and that will help in our economic recovery, including post-COVID. Even as we look to short and medium term measures, such as those recommended in the ERC report, we must also continue to prepare for the future so that our economy can eventually recover to pre-COVID levels and better. Mr. Speaker, here on New Providence, government entered into a port operation and lease agreement with Nassau Cruise Port Limited for the redevelopment and operation of Prince George Wharf and related areas. The capital investment for the project is approximately $200 million. Environmental studies are complete. Work is ongoing. The demolition of the customs warehouse has taken place and demolition of festival place is imminent. A new world-class cruise port will be built so that as the cruising industry recovers, the Bahamas remains a destination of cruise lines. Ms. Speaker, I want to divert here for a second. As we develop a new port facility, it is essential that our cabinet office be relocated temporarily. A new cabinet office is being designed, which would remain on the same site, but it would be designed in such a way that we would still be able to maximize the open space at Rawson Square. And I know that many may have feelings, historical feelings about cabinet office and its location. But I want Churchill Building, but I want the Bahamian people to know that every time it rains, cabinet office, not the sector that cabinet meeting is held, but the floor that my office and the staff are located, every time it rains, that facility is a pawn. We had just repaired the roof last year, but in spite of that, cabinet office and building is still a pawn. So there are serious challenges with that building, Mr. Speaker. Part of that building has been condemned. The Adley building. The front portion has been condemned. Non usage for over 20 years. Times are changing. So I want the Bahamian people to recognize that we do understand the history of cabinet building. We understand the history of Dudley building. But sometimes we must move on but we can still utilize the same location. Do we continue to spend millions of millions of dollars that ain't what you want to be here. That ain't what you want to be here. You better go see, you better let a bike pick up. Oh my God, that's what you're listening to? You don't want to tell the people that. Do that and walk fast? Come on, cuz.
<laughs> Any of um, leader opposition, don't don't take them on. It's always best to hear that than some of the other things that may have come. So I'm I'm sure I respect and the women people respect. Um, yes, yes. But Mr. Speaker, no, so I, I am placing the Bayman public on warning that the cabinet office will be temporarily located. And we are creating, we are creating a design so that all would be able to see. And this would be done by Bahamians so as to maximize and maintain our historical value. But we would not compromise Ross and Square Square. And in fact, we will create more space for them to have future events or any events. On Grand Bahama, Mr. Speaker, the government executed heads of agreement with ITM and RCCL for the purchase of Grand Lucayan Hotel and related properties, as well as the redevelopment of the cruise port. The proposed project will include extensive renovations to the existing hotel and hotel property. And it is anticipated that the redesign will include a boutique hotel, timeshare villas, a commercial village, adventure parks, water parks, a convention center, even hosting facilities, retail spaces, dining and entertainment. ITM and RCCL as a joint venture partnership Holistica have indicated their intention to carry out their investment in the Grand Lucaya project and development of the cruise port. The developer has proposed an amendment phase approach to the development which is presently under review by the government. And the developer, like all around the world, would have likewise been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. But in spite of that, they have great confidence in the Bahamas and the future development of Grand Bahama and the Bahamas. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the construction of Goldwyn, Nassau's newest 156-unit condo hotel and residences on Goodman's Bay is now well underway. The parade and mezzanine levels of the building are now fully completed and the second floor level well underway. I did a tour of such facility, Mr. Speaker, and um, I was so impressed with the facility and the view. And after experiencing the view for myself, I was Anyhow, let me move on. <laughs> Those driving by, Mr. Speaker, can see the structure taking shape with roof expected by autumn, autumn of this year and the completion and delivery on track by December 2021. Goldwyn represents an investment by the developers of approximately $130 million. And at present, Goldwyn currently has a workforce of approximately 150 workers in construction, of which 50 are directly employed by the company and a further 100 by our primary contractor, Bahamas High Rise Construction. Once the project moves into the finishing phases, employment figures are expected to rise to 250 plus. Mr. Speaker, there are a number of other investment projects of which I will continue to report in the House and in other reports to the Bahamian people. The policy reforms we are embarking upon through the Economic Recovery Committee report are intended to help expand the Bahamian economy of old. I advise young Bahamians to be creative. I want to buy my junk no doll from Bahamians, not Taiwanese. They should put together their business proposals. 
I advise young people and all Bahamians to not be caught up in the negative spirit of what is wrong. Let us all seek to work in a spirit of hope and unity to prepare to rebuild our nation and those willing to do the hard work to build the new Bahamas will be the successors of the new Bahamas. We must all have a spirit of we should do, not they should do. It is the spirit of we that built our Bahamas. In this spirit, Mr. Speaker, we will recover stronger together. Mr. Speaker, I just want to mention just some of the great challenges we faced and which we've overcome and accomplished in spite of those who initially may have felt that we could not do it and we would have been bashed left, right and center. I want to congratulate and thank the Minister of Environment who has been successful in eradicating all dump fires. We have resolved the dump issue and those residents who live in the vicinity of the dump can now live in peace and breathe fresh air and have a sense of security. We have experienced for well over 30 years load shedding and blackouts. Now, 50 years. All Bahamians would remember last year what we went through during the summer with load sheddings. BPL, under the leadership of our Minister of Works and Chairman Donovan and leadership Whitney Hasty have succeeded, Mr. Speaker, in eradicating load shedding. We've had no load shedding this summer, and in fact, many of us have not even recognized that we've gone through the summer period. <laughs> no load shedding. Mr. Speaker, there were many complaints also about the cost of electricity. I am happy to announce that that team and BPL again were successful in decreasing the electricity rate in the Bahamian people here in Nassau by 30%. Now, you will still hear individuals' bill is lower than previous, but still high. But why is that so? Because we're affected by the pandemic. Most of our kids and others are staying indoors, and indoors we're utilizing more air conditioning. My air conditioning in my home, my grandson has it on 24-7. <laughs> so I know my bill has gone up and others will be experiencing the same thing. So, and I spoke to a friend just yesterday, and they told me that for the first time in their history, their light bill, in spite of utilizing the air condition, is now $99 and they're wondering what BPL is doing. So I want to congratulate BPL and the minister. And Mr. Speaker, our Minister of Education is successful in preparing our students and our educational system to deal with this pandemic. 
I mentioned that stores, one cannot purchase or order or pay online. But yet, in a short length of time, the Minister of Education was able to accomplish online education for most of our students so that they can survive in this COVID era. Uh, and I also want to commend the Minister of Education who was successful in launching his pre-school program and many of our Bahamians can now enter preschool program supported by the government of the Bahamas, all in preparing <laughs> our young people for a new generation, a new Bahamas, <laughs> and as they become older, they would be able to take care, take advantage of the small development funding program <laughs> offered by our very astute Minister of Finance. So Mr. Speaker, we will overcome, we will conquer COVID, we will win this battle, and like the rest of the world, I've said before that we are now in World War III, the COVID battle, but we will all overcome. After which, we will revise and we will rebuild our economy. So I ask all behind utilizing the words of the leader of the opposition. Stay tuned. And I am certain that he would have no problem of me utilizing his favorite words today. Stay tuned. Our economy will rebound. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. And may God continue to bless the Commonwealth of the Bahamas.